everybody. Sidon, the giant schnauzer, is headed on a walk downtown with me. Doesn't he look handsome with his jacket? So Sidon had a, you know, a couple private lessons, I think, doing the walk with us a while back. But he's a classic case of over-aroused, easily distracted, hard to keep focus on his command, always pushing the buttons, you know the type. You know, you tell them to heal and they're always just like a couple inches ahead, even if you put them back, they're right back out, they're overly distracted, they're constantly paying attention to everything. Well, we've been doing some work on that and as you can see, his position is beautiful, his state of mind is beautiful and now it's my job to make sure that he stays in this beautiful position uh, physically and mentally while we go downtown and enter into a very stimulating environment. Guys, I thought I'd take a second here, sit at the park with Sidon. He's in a downstay. And I wanna to talk to you guys about how I simplify in my own mind um, uh, any given command with a, with a dog, how to, how to keep them compliant, how to reinforce compliance. And it's not quite what you're thinking of, I'm sure. When we, usually when we hear the word reinforcement, we think of positive reinforcement, which means we're, we're giving something to the dog in order to reinforce the behavior. So the way I like to think of it is dogs got choices, just like we have choices. We've taught him the heel command, and we taught him what that means, right? It means you have to be in a certain position, calm and compliant, bingo. Let's call that choice A or option A. There's really only one other option while out on a walk, and we'll call that option B, which is not listening to your handler, disengaging, sniffing, um, just being silly and being a, maybe a bit of a numbskull, right? So you got option A and option B. Now the dog has two choices, listen or don't listen, option A and option B. The way that I really find effective to enforce a dog listening to your commands, uh, the heel command out on a walk, reinforcing that by correcting when they choose option B. If there's only two options, if you take option B off the table by correcting it properly, it only leaves option A. So by correcting for the non-compliance, you reinforce compliance and it works really, really well. Here's the thing, you don't have to have a tennis ball under your arm, a toy un under your arm, uh, a, a pouch full of steak or chicken to bribe your dog to listen. It's just saying, here's option A, listen. Here's option B, don't listen. If you don't listen, I'll correct you. So therefore you're gonna naturally default into doing option A because option B is no longer a valuable option for you. And guys, let me tell you something, I trained hundreds of dogs, it works on every single one. Headed down into the town now, getting a little more distracted, uh, di stimulating, I should say, but it's not wavering my buddy, Mr. Sidon. He's doing fantastic because he knows he needs to stay calm and focused on his command. Now, lots of distractions down here. Let's see how he does. That was a really heavy distraction, and he did fantastic. He looked over a few times, but so didn't I. Those dogs were about to fight each other because they were frustrated um, because they wanted to see Sidon, and there was three of them, and they are amped up, and there was no control. So, good boy, Sidon. Again, let's put this little theory to the test. Option A, stay in your down, stay calm and stay compliant. Option B, 
get up, walk away, sniff around, be defiant. By correcting option B, again, I reinforce option A. It's all about choices, and if a dog's got a lot of choices to make, it causes anxiety. It's like, I could be doing this, this, or this. Taking away all the other choices makes it very obvious to the dog what they need to be doing, and it makes, well, it makes it a lot easier for them. To take it a step further, we want to reinforce calmness, especially with a dog like Sidon, who is easily distracted. So I can work on what we call the double down. If I say down again, he needs to be putting his head to the ground and relaxing. Down. This makes him a lot more reliable and it, and it just makes the conversation a little more specific. It's like, I need you down and I need you really relaxed. Well guys, I hope this was helpful to some degree. Sidon's doing fantastic. He's staying in his position, he's being compliant. Uh, I hope this helps you guys think of the word reinforcement a little bit differently. Just remember, it's all about the dog having choices. If you allow the dog to make choices and correct the ones that you don't like, all that will be left is the ones that you do, okay? And it's really that simple. All right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.